UK Games Expo is on the horizon, but what games are we most looking forward to that are going to be there? UK Games Expo 2024 is but moments away, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about 10 games that really have got us very excited. Yeah, of course, this is the biggest gaming convention that we have in the UK, based up in Birmingham at the NEC. Um, we've had a lot of fun there over the last few years. Um, and, and there always is some launches, some games there that you can play for the first time, even if you can't buy them for the first time. So there's always lots of new, interesting things. Sometimes you get to have a kind of quick look and a play at something that's planned to be launched at Essen, mm -hmm. but this can be the first time that you might see it which is super exciting yeah, what, I, um, what i really love about games expo is you do get those massive publishers mm -hmm. and they're huge stands but often more exciting are the kind of indie developers you know yeah. there's there's a big focus on people who are just creating their own game that mm -hmm. they're going to bring to kickstarter sometimes you've just got a pen and paper design going <laughs> you know the very start of the design process and often i find those things are Oh, uh, 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 there's discoveries to be made there and I remember yeah. in the past we've seen some games there that turned out to be huge um, that, that were just quite unassuming and, and tucked out the back yeah so what we've done to sort of make up these lists I mean there might be other different things that get announced later down the line but we've gone to the UK Games Expo website and where the publishers have put in what's going to be new what's coming what's there to buy for the first time what's there to play for the first time we've filtered around those I mean some of it will be just something that the titles caught our eye they might not change <laughs> even um and other things are things that we sort of already knew but were on the horizon that have we're like oh Gosh, yeah, it's super exciting. Can't wait to see that actually in person, mm -hmm. having sort of spoken about it for quite a long time. I think there might be even a couple here that we spoke about at the beginning of the year yeah. that we were excited that were coming out this year, and we're still excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a couple that we're not going to mention purely because we've got other content either that's come out or is coming out on them, even though they will be at the show. One of those is Survivor Live. Mm -hmm. Um, which you sort of yep. did a five reasons why I might like it because yep. you've played it so at Aircom. Uh, um, and other ones coming from Cosmos and Devere, obviously I have seen through work and I think we probably will have more content on the channel as well. So maybe a playthrough or how to play on Nunatech and or Sand from Devere. So uh, we're, those three aren't in this list just because there will be other coverage yep. on them in some other way. So... But what is on the list? Yeah. Do you yeah. want to start? Yeah, I'll start off with our first of 10 games. Now, do you ever watch other people's content and go, oh, how did I miss that? Uh, we were at Aircon All recently, the time. <laughs> and um, lots of people started talking about Far Away, mm -hmm. uh, particularly our friends over at Farmer Boxes have just covered quite in depth how to play it. And I was like, that game seems great. How did I miss that? Uh and this is basically, it's a it's a card game, a card mm -hmm. drafting game uh, with beautiful, beautiful art uh, where you're you're playing cards and, and bidding for cards that are available by exchanging cards from your hand. With a goal to laying cards down, you're going to score from the reverse order. Oh. You may lay a high scoring card down, but it's only actually going to score if you've satisfied it by previous cards you've already laid because you're going to be scoring backwards. And I think that's such a fun, interesting mechanic. We see so many kind of tableau building games where you just, you know, you, you have a high score card, you oh, satisfy that. But doing it backwards, I think, adds something new and exciting to yeah. the game. It's a bit of a brain Treat. melt when you first start playing it. But I think once it clicks in, that's when it gets really special and the art in it looks fantastic. And yeah, I just, I just love the idea that it's just a bit quirky and a bit different. Yeah, that one sounds super fun. First one up on the list for me technically isn't a new game. It's one that's been around for a little while. Um, it's Cyclades, but this is the Legendary Edition, which is the new version. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I can tell from content that I've seen on it, it's it's basically if you took the original Cyclades, um, which is, you know, you're talking area control game here. Obviously, we're talking ancient gods, there's Poseidon and all of those kind of ones in there. Um, uh, 
and you're basically seeing this legendary edition is taking all of the good bits mm -hmm. from all of the other expansions that have come out, cherry picking those parts that work really well out of those, and then making this kind of like almost like director's cut right, version yeah, yeah. sort of thing. Um, um, and it, it really interests me in terms of you've got this bidding mechanism for what different god powers you're going to use. It's harder now to start off and thinking, right, I know that I'm going to give outbid on that, but I want to be so that I they can then move there mm -hmm. and people won't really know what I'm after. Because uh, when you bid for something, that it sort of hikes up the next step so much more than it used to. It kind of stops some of that behavior or changes the behavior within the bidding process anyway and yes you are doing exploring area control kind of thing but you've got all these god powers there's loads going on just looks really meaty and i love the idea of having the so-called sort of director's cut yeah, yeah. of this kind of game so um it is one that i did nearly back on <laughs> i mean i say this all the time but i'm so tempted all the time but you know we're paying for a wedding so i have to restrain myself but um, yeah, this is going to be there at UK Games Expo, so it'll be great to see what their kind of real kind of the perfect version of Cyclades is. Whereas again, them. I know so little about, but I do know it was part of other games, wasn't it? It was, it was associated with Inish and Kemet. Yeah, both of sort which sort of in that like a series. Both of which have been really appealing to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe this is something I need to find out more. About. Yeah, I mean, I think we've played out of those. We've played Inish most, mm -hmm. um, and I would say I love it more than you do. Yeah. I think that's because um i like the art and the theme and the setting of it more than cry havoc which is your yes, preference I, I in terms of those which have relatively kind of got similar some similar ideas mm -hmm. to them so um yeah I'm, I'm excited for that one i i do enjoy that kind of greek god and powers and all of that kind of stuff i love the idea that you can sort of bid to get poseidon and he'll help you across the seas and all of that kind of stuff that's so. what's really great about things like games expo is that if there's a game you're tempted by and you know some of these are very very expensive to buy and you think well maybe i like that get a chance to actually play all these new games and go well yeah that is definitely for me <laughs> sign me up or yeah. okay i i hope to be more focused on that kind of thing this is a great game but it's not something to add to my collection it allows mm -hmm. you to 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 find out about those games without a personal cost. Yeah, and obviously if you already have the older original version of Cyclades and maybe you don't have some of those, um, I think there's a Titans expansion and another mm -hmm. one certainly that kind of combine in. Um, if you don't have those and, and you know, would it be worth you doing an upgrade or not? That'd be, you know, a yeah. it's time to, to check that out. Czech Games Edition are a publisher we really love. I yeah, mean, yeah, they. I mean, they. I think they hit our ballpark really well. Yeah. Like almost everything that they come out with is just it's kind the of right past. Yeah, it's the right theme. It's the right level. It's the right game duration. Mm -hmm. We get them to a table an awful lot. Not, not just Lost Winds of Arnak, but obviously Starship so, Captains. We yeah. really, really love. Another game I was really excited about last year uh, was Astro Navigators, and for various reasons, that's not hit our table you know, as a finished product yet, but it will eventually come. But in the meantime, TGO have just announced SETI, uh, which is Search for Extraterrestrial Life. And basically, we don't know a great deal about it, apart from the fact it's got an evolving board that rotates in a kind of last light style. Okay, um, interesting. And I'm, I'm really interested in the theme, the idea. Mm. I, I've done various things to work about the SETI Institute and how they are, you know, using different methods to explore the universe and you know there's going to be something out there eventually we're going to find it and i i think this this theme isn't explored enough especially no. with real life physics and actual science yeah. underlining it all so that's something that really piqued my interest having cg on the box means yes that's going to be our kind of level our kind of production finish Lots of things there that are going to be really appealing for me. Yeah, I'm excited to see more about that. As you say, this is really a theme that, that we do love and we have covered several other games mm -hmm. that have, have gone into that theme and, and we would welcome more and more because it's just it's so, so appealing. to And that idea that you have got that rotation, yeah. I mean, that is super exciting for yeah, me. Yeah, so want to find out more about that. Only just announced, we don't we know very little more than this, <laughs> but hopefully after Games Expo we'll know an awful lot more. Yes. 
I am staying in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this is a new one from Leader Games. It's Arx. Um, and this sounds super interesting. So it's got some of those mechanisms that we might be familiar with in terms of Root and mm -hmm. some of those other games that come out of Leader Games, which we adore. We've got quite a few of those. <laughs> um, but this has got like 4X. Right. This has got trick taking. Mm -hmm. This has got the follow action in terms of interacting with your different you players do love around the table. I love a follow <laughs> action. But when do you choose to do that? And when do you save things to be able to do the things that you really need to do to achieve something else? Space is decaying. And so you're trying to survive and build something up. And yes, you are doing this kind of 4X going out and exploring and all of that. And to have that with where I'm assuming there's going to be some asymmetrical powers, but to add trick taking mm -hmm. into that, um, we do love some trick taking games. We do, yeah. Um, and I think the reason we hadn't initially backed this one was because it had said three to four players. Um, and obviously we often play it too. Yeah. And we sort of wondered, you know, how much will we get it played or not? Um, but it does. And that does make sense with a trick-taking game needing to have that amount. Yes. But they have now, I think, changed the play count. So it does start it from at two. two. Yes. Um, so it'd be, I'm, I'm even more interested in it now than we were previously, just to see how they're going to achieve that, what they're doing with that. But, I mean, anything from Leader Games. Well, this is the same. Is, again, with CG. Like, they're one of our sort of top publishers where you know anything that they come out with. It's like, I feel like there's there's a sort of... A certain a certain level of oh, you know what you're up. getting. Well, um, well, for me, same design as Root, same artist as Root. Yeah. How am I not going to like that? Yeah. No, and 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 the aesthetic looks like it's not like they look samey. No, no. no. And there obviously there's a lot of different mechanisms in there, but if you know how well they can do all of that asymmetry and things that you get in Root, then it does make you so excited about what's going to come with arcs and how that's going to fit well in that sort of more spacey, universey setting. Now, with my, my game choices, I've tried to cover ones that do just interest me or I think we're going to play together, also ones we're going to play as a family. Now, Aethermon Collect. In this, you're going around collecting mythical anime-style monsters okay. that evolve. Okay. And if you collect them all, you get higher scoring points. You collect them all? Yeah, you've got to catch them all. That's that's really what you want to do to get highest <laughs> points in this. <laughs> yeah, so for this Amon game, uh, <laughs> it's it's a so from a tableau from a, a section of cards on the table which are randomised. You can move horizontally or vertically, and wherever you place this, the the mover is the card you get to take. Right. So obviously this is a very simple family weight game, but there's. As with so many of these games, it looks quite simple, but there's kind of hidden depth because obviously where you're placing things allows you to determine what your opponent's going to be able to take because obviously they've got to move in a horizontal or vertical way. Mm -hmm. So if they start set collecting a certain thing and you know they're going to get a lot of points if they get the complete set. In fact, if they do, they double the point cost Ooh. for each card. So it's worth doing. So do you go for what you need or do you kind of, kind of hate place mm -hmm. so they can't get the card they need or do yeah. you then swoop in and get a card preventing them from getting complete sets and there's a cooperative mode in there so you no know, for family weight games often i think that's needed yeah um, especially if you're newer to the hobby i think cooperatives are a great way to go yeah often i it's... mean your girls now this sounds like the kind of that that kind of yeah. take that is where they're at at the minute they're, they're well, can, out to win yeah you, and they've gone past that you can choose of... it with a cop you know yeah. we can say let's all play together and then what happens is you know one person can only collect one type she needs to position them so they can get useful cards for them but then once that's all grounded you can go okay well let's play competitively mm -hmm. yeah um, and yeah some children just don't want to lose and, and they and they do and it's like well i'm never playing that game ever no. again i've lost what's the point in this so often cooperative is a nice way of yeah. introducing the game because i feel like we've gone past that yes. stage in yeah, this they... family but it is nice to bring new family it does take a while for in. it to click that the enjoyment of playing is the, is the reason you play <laughs> not to win or to lose but yeah this is this seems it's beautifully designed you know pokemon comparisons aside it is lovely to look at on the table mm -hmm. uh, and i think it's going to be quick to play and often that's just something you need yeah. we can just focus on you know the, the big latest triple a games but sometimes you get the most enjoyment from just something that's quite simple that you table again and again and again mm -hmm. and perhaps this could be one we we do that in the future with 
Next up from me, I've actually gone in a similar direction. We're putting cards on the table. It's a slightly more simple game. It's a new one from Oink Games, which we do love. Those little tiny boxes, which mm -hmm. are so great for travel, um, for going to visit people, popping to mm -hmm. a restaurant, playing before. Just so easy to get to the table and take out and about with you. And are often really nice family weight games. And this one is Moving Wild, which is actually a sort of a, a reincarnation of Zuli. Okay. Um, so basically you're using that drafting mechanism that we know and love so well from games like Sushi Go, things like that. So you are passing the cards around, taking one, and you're trying to sort of complete your sort of nature reserve with these animals, the different places that they want to be. Obviously, the hippos like a bit of water, but they also like the land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something else might need to stay in the trees or um, the bears apparently like to be on their own. They don't like to be bothered yeah, by other bears. animals. So you're trying to draft the things that work really well for you, the areas and the, all the different things that you're going to need and, and get them all working together. And obviously, again, you've got that same sort of, do you take the card that I can see that they need? Mm -hmm. Do I take what I really would like? Am I trying to make a set all in one sort of area and make it easier for myself? But what happens if that card never comes up or something? Take, someone takes it before? So I think it's going to be simple play, but, um, you know, there's a nice little thinking space there, a yeah. cute little easy travel game and a fun theme with fun little art on it that I'm, we I'm, can introduce, I think, to non-players and things like I'm, that. I'm hearing lots of good things about Zulia. It's mm -hmm. It was quite big a few years back, so I'm Please, it's actually going to be able to reach a larger audience and then more people can experience what is essentially a really great core game. Yeah, and this plays up to six, which is a nice number mm -hmm. for that kind of occasion. So i um, excited to see more from Oink Games. Yeah. A game I saw at Aircon, and I was kicking myself, I saw it towards the end of the convention, uh, was Time Troopers. <laughs> now, I was, I was just sitting down playing a game and it kind of caught me out of the corner of my eye and I was like, as soon as I finish this, I'm going to go and talk to them. And there was not enough time for me to get a demo of it. And I'm I'm, I'm so frustrated by that because it's ticking a lot of the boxes of, of things that I really, really love. It's a strong narrative game. Uh, it's a solo game, which I'm playing more and more of. It's um, got time travel. It's got, yeah, it's got time travel <laughs> mechanisms. It's got beautiful art that spans all sorts of interesting periods in history. And it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a kind of campaign game. So... Each their own sections are kind of self-contained with interesting twists on the mechanics. And then you then go back home and the next chapter you play will be slightly, slightly different um, with different cards and different quirks and each of the art tweaked accordingly to match the theme. And I thought, there's so much here I like. I, I just want to play this, please. And mm -hmm. like I said, there's just no chance to be able to. Yeah. So Time Troopers... Not a lot of, of information out there about it, and I just wish I could find out more about it because, yeah, it seems to tick every one of my boxes. Yeah, but they will be there at UK Games Expo, mm -hmm. so people can go along and have a little, have a little find, look find at Find out that. more about it. Yeah. Next up for me is from Mighty Boards. It's Fate Forge Chronicles of Khan. Now, I did see some of this laid out at Essen back mm -hmm. in October time, um, and it looks epic. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of like an RPG sort of thing. You are working cooperatively. There's an app there which is going to help you go through these different missions. Um, it is sort of campaigning only about an hour, though, which I really appreciate that idea that you can, you know, you can choose to do several scenarios if you've got the time, but you can actually get a game like this out that's very story-like, has all of that kind of immersive world elements mm -hmm. to it, and you can actually get a game done in about an hour. Um, and the app is going to do all of that, adding the thematics, doing that kind of game mastery, right. admin, all yeah. of that stuff for us. And we're still going to have this epic adventure where we're going off and we're trying to stop this Khan from wanting to be the kind of all-powerful being that when everyone bends the knee to and he has this whole sort of you your whole world is at his feet I mean no one wants that so you're going off on your mission to try and stop that from happening and each each of the campaigns will will sort of where where the story leads for you will depend on what happens i really like that mm -hmm. so if you've got these different routes and you feel like your decisions are making a difference with that um and just having that explore in in this world which looks 
fantastic looks quite rounded in terms mm -hmm. of what they've done for the themes of it and the well, if, you want, if, you're, in, if you're doing an rpg you want depth you you mm -hmm. you want a, a rich narrative you want to feel immersed in a yeah. in a whole world a sporting world yeah and it really looks like this is what mighty boards are doing sometimes that whole sort of rpg world is something that some that haven't sort of dived into it yet can feel a bit intimidated mm -hmm. by that idea of having to be a game master and kind of run this thing that you're not totally familiar with you know it is kind of a, a world on window within gaming upon itself and i feel like this is a really nice entry point into mm -hmm. that sort of hold your hand through that uh, and open up that world for this this different area of gaming if you haven't sort of dived into the rpg yet, i think this is going to do that really well so we sat down with sean and jess from allies and enemies at aircon mm -hmm. and we got to play spokes and I, I must admit i wasn't expecting great things from this i saw this and thought okay it's bike racing is that a feeling that grabs yeah, i mean me? you're not a huge like sporty game no, person not, not. like i love to watch a velodrome on the tv so I feel that's like one of the small my vibe. that's one of the olympic sports that britain's quite good at yeah that's why <laughs> we're I quite watch. good at cycling <laughs> um but we played this and i would say within a turn each we got it we thought we know how to play this and as the game progressed the intricacies of it became more and more apparent how you're laying down those little wooden rods yeah. to guide your bike around the velodrome slipstreaming yeah doing combos and trying to maximize routes so you can suddenly get a great big speed boost around the corners dump back in it felt really really exciting <laughs> and I, I had no idea a sports game could feel like this it felt like it was replicating the sport in such an elegant and simple way just by placing these little <laughs> lines of color down yeah and trying to manage where they are on your wheel and how you can just not just chain you know movements in your turn but how it's going to position you for a subsequent turn and having your your wheel in the right place to keep on going keep that momentum going yeah that was really important track. making sure that yes you found this amazing route to boost you back around again but then is that going to leave you stuck on the next turn mm -hmm. and also like when you get yourself like a little boost a special power when are you going to use that to best effect because towards the end of that game people can absolutely fly around those it's, corners and you just think you were in last place a minute ago where have you come from it's so <laughs> clever because it has a kind of inbuilt catch-up mechanism because future you know players ahead of you are laying down routes they're creating these paths so yeah. if you can then get in on that in on their slipstream you can then combo what they've done with what you've done and essentially get ahead of them and because you can't have two people existing in the same space you then leap ahead of them and then suddenly you're in the way of them it's so clever. And it's just mm. one of these games like, why has no one done that before? <laughs> it's such a simple game. Yeah, we had we had such a good time with it, didn't we? Uh, yeah, so if you see that at Games Expo, don't just go, well, that's a cycling game. That's not interesting because it is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. so, so pleasantly surprised by them. Yeah, I'm excited to play again. Last up for me is a game coming from Devere, and one of the designers is Phil Walker Harding. Now, I feel like if I say those two things <laughs> in a sentence, like, you know it's going to be good, right? <laughs> I mean, the cover looks great. You've got, I mean, we love travel, but, you, you know, you've got Sydney, you've got Rio de Janeiro, you've mm -hmm. got London, you've got all these different cities there. And what you're going to be doing is trying to sort of build up a district within your city. Yeah, city yeah. Um, and obviously, you're... you're trying to see who's built the best one it's a game that lasts maybe about 40 minutes so uh, i think quite a nice kind of like entry level family game sort of mm -hmm. level of things um and yeah i mean the box looks beautiful and you're putting out you can lay up different things to sort of get get buildings to be up to i think four levels high so you know are you spreading out are you going up what are you including in your building are you including sort of like watery areas and different things you've got a lot of options by the looks of it haven't seen too much of this and i think it's one of its one of its sort of early looks at games expo in terms of being out and demoing mm -hmm. um, it might have been seen in the u.s previously at some of their shows but certainly in the uk here at games expo is the first one that anyone's had it at the table and it will be being demoed um in the devere tables on the cosmos stand for the first time so Brilliant. 
and it will be available to buy shortly after the show. I noticed not there. <laughs> on this list, you've included so many of our kind of favourite publishers. Mm-hmm. I mean, Devere have been on such a roll of late. Yeah. I mean, one of their favourite, one of my favourite games so far this year has been White Castle. We've been playing an awful lot of. Yes. Uh, you know, we talk about Patoku. It's in both of our top ten lists. Mm-hmm. Devere for us are kind of a, a calling card for greatness when you see yeah. that devere logo on the box you know this is going to be high-end production this is going to be well thought out mechanics particularly of phil walker harding working on it yeah and that that to me is is the recipe for that's going to be a great game one you need to keep an eye on yeah I, I feel like it's going to have a nice little sort of puzzly thinky feel about it um and and yeah a, a nice medium weight not mm-hmm. not not too taxing it's an easy get it to the table and get it played any night of the week kind of game that's what i'm hoping so excited for that yeah so that's 10 games that we are particularly yeah. exciting about that's going to be at the game expo but have you looked at the list have you seen the games that are coming what's tickled your pickle what are you very what have we exci- missed yeah what have we not what have we not noticed <laughs> on the list which is ever growing yes yeah and that's what the excitement as it gets closer to games expo that list gets bigger and bigger and mm. bigger and you go oh Oh, hold on. I didn't even know that game existed. Yeah, That's yeah. A yeah. And like I was saying at the beginning, sometimes just walking around, you go, oh. What's this? An old game I'd never even heard of. Yes, please. <laughs> or a new game I'm going to keep my eye on. Or that's coming to Kickstarter. Very excited by that. Yeah, and we love these expos for all of those things. So um, if you're going, do enjoy it as much as you're looking around the aisles mm. and, and enjoy exploring new things in the hobby. Um, but if you've enjoyed watching us, then <laughs> obviously we'd love it if you subscribe, like, and as we said earlier, comment. Um, and if you're looking to buy any board games, our friendly local game store is at UK Games <laughs> Expo, and that's Chaos Cards. They're based here in the southeast of England. But if you are shopping online with them, not at the show, then we do have a discount code in the description for you to use at the checkout for a few pennies off. Yep, so grab yourself a bargain before, <laughs> before the show. Before even at the show. Maybe <laughs> buy something you take with you. But if you are going to UK Games Go, I hope you have a fantastic time. Embrace the whole experience because it is often the highlight of the year for us. Uh, so thanks as always for watching. Bye.